I wanted to look at using LT Spice to do some circuit simulations, and I started out making this op amp mixer just to see how things work when you have two different signals, which ultimately it's going to be for audio synthesizer and sound effect generating. So I'm taking VN1 as a sine wave at a certain frequency voltage, VN2 at a different frequency and voltage if I want, and I'm simulating how this will look in an op amp mixer and how the waveforms combine. So I had to set this up on a Mac. I was used to using LT Spice on Windows, but it was not so intuitive as I learned to use the Mac version. I originally used LT Spice on Windows, but now I'm on a Mac right this minute, so I needed to reinstall and doing a search for LT Spice download, it's on the analog devices site, so there's Windows and Mac. For Linux with Wine, it could also be run on Windows version. Once I installed it for the Mac, really, there's not much to the screen. Um, I have another window here behind the main one. This is it. You just get a run, a stop, and some sort of little utility thing, but I was used to being able to go up to the file menu and open up things to choose components to put down, all the things you would want to do. But it seems like on the Mac, all you can do is basic things like file, save, print, etc. So I had to do a little research and find out, how do I use this on a Mac? And it's all about the right-click button. So this isn't very intuitive to me either, but I figured out a few things. So to do the op amp circuit, I start out, I know I'm going to put an op amp down, so let's just say we go to component, and there's some basics here. Let's go to op amps. And I don't know if it matters for my purpose which one, I'm just going to pick this one, ultra low noise, precision high speed, etc. So I will drop this down here and escape to get rid of that. Now I'm going to want to put down resistors. So going back in here, well, here's a resistor, a resistor. Now I don't know, I think all this stuff, the default provided models. I think this is a bit different than the Windows version. I'm not sure how this all has been configured, but here's a resistor, so I'm going to go with it. Now, I think Control R rotates, so there's going to be one somewhere up here in the feedback loop, one somewhere over here for the input. Well, I'm going to do a summing amplifier, so I'll put two of these here and escape. Now let's wire this up. So draft and wires. So I just click. I know this is going to the inverting input. So if I draw a line end to end, as long as it's going between nodes, it'll terminate. So in this case, I draw from up here bring it down, and it terminates, and shows the connection node. The other side of the feedback resistor goes to the output of the op amp, and terminates when I click. This other resistor for the summing configuration is going to go in the input. These two nodes, I don't need to put any wires here. I'm just going to label these as VN1 and VN2, and I can just attach a label, and it will be the same as a net with a node name. So if I say draft net name, and I call it VN1, I just attach this directly to the resistor, and that's now VN1. I'll do the same for VN2, attach it, and I'm going to want V out here, but I will draw a little line to make it 
more representative of a normal looking circuit just to give a visual node. So I've drawn a straight line and I just hit escape to get rid of this and that's good enough. Now I go net name v out. The reason for labeling these aside from visually is because later when I do a plot these traces will be labeled and I don't have to look at generic letters and numbers. So now I'm going to need, I'm going to use a split power supply. Let's go with plus and minus 9 volts. So I'm going to have to build that. But first, what are these resistor values? If I right click on this, I'll give this 10k. And these are going to be 10k as well because it's just going to be a unity gain. All I want to do is mix the signals. I don't care to amplify or attenuate. So I want to build a plus and minus 9 volt supply. I will right click, go to component, and somewhere down here there's voltage, even though voltage isn't a component, that's how we do it. So this can become AC or DC or pulse, etc. I'm going to use two DCs and I'm going to need a plus 9 and a minus 9. I'm going to join it in the middle and give that ground. So, go back to wires. I need to join the minus of one battery to the plus of the other. And this is DC 9 volt. And this is DC 9 volt. So now, if I give this actual V plus, and this V minus, and this ground, I have plus and minus 9 volts for the op amp. So to get a ground on here, this is one of the things that was very confusing. In Windows, there was an, a component, I think there might have been a power source or something area, but here you have to go to net name. That was not intuitive to me. You go to net name and you click ground up there and suddenly at the cursor you have a ground symbol. So you just use that to wire up. So now I draw a wire to this center of the two 9 volt batteries and now that's going to be the ground of a plus and a minus. So I'm going to name these nets plus 9V attach it up here and minus 9V attach it down here. There's my split supply. So this is going to be minus 9V. I can throw this here and I need to go back and do plus 9V. Attach that to the positive op amp rail. Now since this is a summing amplifier, the non-inverting input needs to be grounded for a center point between plus and minus so the signal can swing from the center. So back to net names and clicking ground to get that attached. I throw that here and wire it up. In order to draw this the direction I want, first I have to come over, click to anchor it, and then go down and click to terminate. So now this is the basic op amp setup, but I need to configure V in one and two. If I'm going to call these audio little sine waves, I'm going to put more voltage sources here. So this, it is a DC by default. So I'm going to put another component called voltage. I'm going to lay them down here for convenience. I'm going to need two of these because I have two inputs. I'm going to need to ground this bottom terminal. So back to net name. Click for the ground symbol. And ground each of those. And now back to net name. And I called this VIN1 and VIN2. So VIN1 
will come from here and Vn2 comes from the other voltage source. Now, right click on the voltage sources. It's defaulting at DC, so I hit advanced and I get the AC option. I'm going to use sine wave. And I have a lot of options here. All I really care about is I want one to be a 2 volt amplitude and let's make it 500 hertz tone, and that's it. So it's showing that, and now I right click on the other one, advanced for the sine wave. This one I will make it a 3 volt sine wave at 500 hertz. And I want to be able to move this out of the way. It's overlapping. It doesn't automatically snap it anywhere available. So now I have a complete circuit. I have unity gain 10k feedback resistor, 10k input resistor, and I have two voltage sources that are configured as 2 and 3 volt sine waves at 500 hertz each. I have a split plus and minus 9 volt supply grounded in the center, and the op amp is powered. So now, I just need to set up a simulation. So again, everything is in that right-click menu. I had to go back to Draft and go to Spice Directive. And that's where the menu is, where you set up the transient dot tran analysis. And I want to do this for about 10 milliseconds. You have to kind of know what to put here. So I just looked it up to become more familiar. You can add all kinds of options, but that's all we're going to do. A transient analysis, and it's going to run for 10 milliseconds. So that should allow us to capture several sine wave iterations. So if I click OK, I just throw that somewhere on the schematic. And now there should be enough detail here to run a simulation. So I moved the circuit out of the way a bit. Now if I right click and say run, this off amp was giving me some very slow simulation times. I don't know why, maybe the model is complicated and it takes a while to process. So I'm going to delete that and choose a different one. Go back to component OP27. This should drop right in place because it's the same size and the pins are in the same place. So let me run that. So I said I want to do a transient analysis for 10 milliseconds and here's my simulation window, 10 milliseconds long. But there's no waveforms because I need to go back, click the schematic. So since I'm in simulation mode, I have this probe visible when I'm hovering on a wire. So if I click the ones that I want to appear, like the output and the two inputs, then I'm just going to rerun it and it will bring those waveforms up in the simulation, which is 10 milliseconds long as I requested with the transient 10 millisecond command. And they are nicely labeled now because I labeled the nets up here. VN1 is green. VN1 I configured as a sine wave. 500 hertz, 2 volts peak. So green VN1, it goes up to 2 volts and down to minus 2 volts as expected. VN2, which is dark blue, is a 3 volt peak sine wave. So it goes up to 3 and down to minus 3. Since this is a summing amplifier, we expect 2 plus 3 is 5 volts out, and it's an inverting summing amplifier. So 2 plus 3 positive should give negative 5, and V out is red. That's negative 5. When I have negative 2 plus negative 3 volts in, that should be positive 5, and so it is. So in this op amp configuration, Pretending we don't have VN2 or this 10K, if we just have VN1, 
with a series 10k and a feedback resistor of 10k, the equation for the gain is negative feedback resistor divided by input resistor, or negative 10k divided by 10k, which equals negative 1. In other words, it's just the inverse of what you're putting in. V out is negative V in 1. If I changed one of these two resistors, we'd have a different scaling on here, higher or lower than V in. When we add another resistor and another input called V in 2, with V in 2 connected this way, it's looked at individually, so we have now V out equals negative V in 2 times the feedback resistor 10k divided by the input resistor here 10k. So if you got one volt here and one volt here, then V out for this part is negative one volt, and V out for this part is negative one volt. So V out should be negative one plus one is negative two out. So let's try that. V in one and V in two. Let's change these to make it one volt. So now V in 1 and V in 2 are both a 500 Hz sine wave with 1 volt. So if I run the simulation, well, the colors are mixed to a kind of a brighter blue. V in 1 is green, V in 2 is dark blue, so they are directly overlapping and giving a lighter blue. So the colors are mixing just like the op amp is. So this is 1 volt on top of one volt, and the op amp is adding those, so it should be negative two out. And here it is, negative two out. When this is negative one, and this is negative one, we have a sum of negative two in, so this inverts and gives us positive two out. Here's negative one and negative one in, and we get positive two out. Now, if these sine waves were not the same frequency, or if they were out of phase, of course, the voltages are going to add up differently. So let's try that. Make the second one maybe 250 hertz. Run that simulation. And so now, red being V out, depending at any point in time where these two different input sine waves are at, the independent voltages are still going to be summed and inverted, so you end up with this funky combination of sine waves. So you can see you have this overall, the dark blue V in 2 is a slower 250 hertz, and you can kind of see that if you ignore this little bump on the red trace output, you have an overall slow inverted version of the dark blue. And V in 1 is a faster green sine wave. And you can kind of see here, that's what this little bumpiness is in the output. You get this extra peak because it's moving faster and going high and low in between the overall slow signal. So you kind of get a little bump, which is an inversion of the faster sine wave. So you get a more complex combined output. So if you had a 500 hertz and a 250 hertz sine wave and you're summing them like this, you should hear a complex output tone. And that's where using this for a synthesizer or other tone generator or sound effect generator comes into play. We take independent signals, mix them together, and hear what it sounds like. So that's my quick introduction to using LT Spice on a Mac. <laughs> it took me some learning to get to this point. It was easier in Windows, but you do what you gotta do.